Hi guys, it's Nancy Lynn and we got the new prompts. Um, and this one is a tree for the Christmas ones or a snowflake for the winter ones. And I had already gone gotten together my pieces to be working on. Um, when we were finishing up last time I just decided I'd go ahead and put them all together so that way I didn't have to take the time to do all that. Um, so I've got my red set and my green set and actually I think I'm going to add a new set to these. Um, my sister-in-law doesn't watch this and I don't think she does anyway, but she always does Christmas beachy and um, I've worked on her Christmas stockings over and over again, changing names through the years, re-embroidering them. And I think I'm going to do her a set also, but in the beachy scene. So I'm not quite ready for that, but I will be adding that to this set. So it'll be the three sets. I know, crazy, but I'm retired. I can do this. <laughs> That's the lovely bit about being retired. Okay, so I'm going to start with the green one set this time. And I kind of have an idea of where I want to go with this one. And I just figured I'd take you guys along. All I'm going to do is figure out, I want my Christmas tree to be, let's see. Maybe three and a half inches at the widest. And... I need that much room for my hanger and down a little bit and maybe five so three and a half by five so I'm going to come over here and I can use whatever I've got uh, let's see if my Frixion pen works this time so I want it to be well, let's measure the five I, I couldn't find a smaller ruler at the moment all right, so if I come from here to here, that's five. And I want at its biggest point, which is right there, and that's three and a half, so that's gonna be, oh, that's good. Three and a half to there, okay? So all I'm going to do is give me a basic Christmas tree shape. So if you don't have one, you don't feel like printing one out, find your top point, carry it down, and did that mark. No. Nope. Top point, carry it down. I knew that was going to, that's why I brought extra pins out here. In case these are a set of um, pigment liners um, and I got these at five below I got some other markers at five below um, usually they're about five dollars for a big pack of them and they seem to hold up and last so all right so we got that maybe we'll show them in camera and I'm coming down to here, to there. And I just wanted to make sure that I had a basic triangle. To work from. So that's my step one. And do I clearly know what I'm doing? No, but I'm going to wing it. Alright, let me put this back up. So they don't get separated. Put them back up in the right spot. 
that's my thing. I get so into what I'm doing that I don't put things in the right spot again. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out. This is just, uh, this was something else I got at Five Below and it's um, some watercolor paper. Now we have our basic Christmas tree shape and I'm going to do this one on this green one here. So that is my basic shape and what my intentions to do is I think I'm going to do this with rows of lace and then maybe some pearls and I, I want to keep this one kind of simple. So. Like if I had my bottom row here, and then maybe my next row might be a row of those, and then my next row. might be a row of this and then the next row could be a little I think I'm going to keep these tinier ones for up closer to the top um, and I like going from the white to the other lace so I need to find some white lace this bag here nope oh, that's good all but that can be for this can do that I I'm just playing just putting these into I think that would be really pretty for a tree. Now we keep going up. But I am going to grab me a bag of some white lace so I can interchange them. I like that can be the next piece there. I don't know if I want that ribbon, but that's my basic idea going to the top. Now this is going to have to come down quite a bit because I still need to make sure that I leave, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do to make sure I leave that room. Just as a reminder. And I know that's where my playground is. And so I think if you guys get the basic idea of it, I'm going to go and get some more white lace. And I'll start working on it. I'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff around me. I've decided that I want to do a little bit of not just using this plain background. So I've got a couple of fabrics out here that I have pulled aside for my green stuff. Only problem is every time I bring more stuff out, my scissors get more hidden. 
And this is this one that's got the is it a holly mistletoe? I think it's holly. So I'm just gonna cut some of this. Oh, I just love tearing fabric. So now we've got I might make that smaller. But I brought out all my different greens. Seeing I'm doing my Christmas tree in white. And like I said, there's no... If you are a slow stitcher, then you're used to the tearing and putting stuff down and now I got my template so I can keep an eye on areas that don't really need to focus on I also have this bigger one see that's the one I'm afraid is not gonna go because I have a lot of these plaids two pieces. I have this another one and these are all different. This one is um, like a, a, a loosely woven fabric. This one is like a wool blend. And this is cotton. So they're all different. You don't have to stick with the same well, This is the one. I want to use this fabric but it just doesn't This one that's green and a little bit of red. And this one is a woven, a lightly woven fabric too. Let's lift up our tree. Put that there, that there. That's going to cover, we can bring that in a little bit more. Make sure that's all the way there. So that's the only spot that I have bare. And it's just a little shy, so I may have to put Now this one is a true wool. <sighs> Alright, so there we have it. We've got enough room for our stem here. And I won't care if my star goes up into this at all. And so that is it, and as you'll notice, I'm going to kind of flatten this out. I have got to bring out my little iron. And now I need to decide what get my pins.
all I'm doing is trying to catch points where they cross to hold this together. Now my next decisions I need to make are what color thread am I going to use to base this down with and what type of stitching am I going to do. If you watch Sarah's video, you know, she was like, well, I'm not going to do, and she kind of went around. That's going to bug me, that piece right there. That's better. And there's, I just don't like these little off angles. I don't mind a little rounding, but I don't like the weird angles. Okay, so now I have this, and so now I have to decide thread-wise. I have this, which would show on all of them. I have this darker green, and this is an old quilter's trick, and if you're not a quilter, if I can get to the end, to see which threads you want, take them, pull them out, pull them across, you know, try them across different ones, and then that way you can see if you like the color of the thread against your fabrics. So that's that. Now I'm going to get some regular thinner th thread to see if I like that. And like I said, you're not going to see all that middle part. So that's not a concern. What I am concerned with is my stitching next. So. I'm going to get some more thread and be back. Okay, guys. What I went ahead and I decided I was going to use one of the ones that I originally had out. And this is Cousin Clark's Boil Fast ONT Cotton. And it says Brilliant. I don't see any other numbers on it. That's the one I'm going to use. And I'm just going to tie modified quilters not just going around one time and we'll start up here with this one I decided on this one because if I'm going to now I'm having to be careful because I do not want to catch As a matter of fact I know that I'll do it so now that I know that I've got all that ample room up there, is that too much? No, I can put a thing of lace right there. All right, we'll be good. Decisions, decisions, decisions. And all I'm doing is going to do a running stitch. see a problem with. I've got my background on already and I don't want that. So I need to take off that. All I want to be stitching through so that my stitches will be hidden, and that's my background. So now I'm back to now that feels better. I knew there were too many layers because already it's the batting, the backing, 
and the patch mark I put on top. So you've got quite a few layers here. Normally, I like to do a basting stitch all the way around, and I may regret not doing that, as I don't like to catch on the needles. And see, you really cannot... I mean, it doesn't stand out, but yet it's still I've learned one thing. I like using the plaid because it gives you lines to go by so you're not all wavy. <laughs> Although you can still be wavy with this, but probably going to cut off for a minute and go get my thimbles. I had taken them with me to my Red Hens meeting. My favorite thimbles and I couldn't find and I went to my doctor's office yesterday and in my purse in a pocket was all my thimbles. And let me tell you, they save your hands. Now this is all extending out over but I'm not cutting it. I, I just don't have my I'll show it to you. I do not have my batting going all the way out to the edges. So I don't see the batting coming out this way. It's there. It's given it support. Now you could probably use um, like on my journal covers, sometimes I'll use foam on them. Uh, it works really well, and I'm sure it would work great on these two, and it's pretty easy to needle through. Um, so, I mean, that's also another option you could put on the back of these if you wanted them to have a little more stability to them versus just layers of fabric. So, I mean, that's totally a your choice as to what you would like to use. Now, hopefully, my stitches are pretty even because at this distance I'm feeling <laughs> I am not really seeing what I'm doing all right well I am going to continue on with this and the reason I'm going out this far is because I do want the fraying on the edges and so this will kind of stop it it'll fray to like that point and then it'll quit and so that's the first one and then the next one will come back in on the next video and I will, should have all this stitched and then we'll work on our tree with the lace now I have an idea for the this one I had said I was going to keep these for the second prompt, but I've already switched it with this green one because I was going to use, yeah, we'll just switch them up. It doesn't matter, but I, I wanted them to be every other, oh, that's a thing to think about. Maybe not. This is the other one. 
and my idea for this tree was to do I want it three-dimensional and I was thinking about doing I don't know how crazy I'll be about this once I get to it but something like all bullion stitches I've seen them somewhere I saw one done with all bullion stitches and it was just beautiful because it just had that three-dimensional effect but on this one this is my one that's a little bit bigger and I'm gonna want to do some more in the background I think like maybe a window I don't know we'll see something else but that's the idea for the next one so see I've already broken my rule because I switched to this green one So it's going to throw off my, because this is the one I used first on the next one. You see what I'm saying? So it's one, but this has got all this stuff on it, so it'll be fine over here. We'll figure it out. But anyway, <laughs> I swear I, I think I am. It, you just have to keep doing it till you find what you like and so I hope this gives you some ideas to think about I uh, hope you have lots of fun doing this Rachel Sarah thank you for another good prompt um, looking forward to seeing what everybody's up to and doing so this is Nancy Lynn saying goodbye for now